Welcome back to AgriTalk. Um, today we are talking about um, hubs for exports, especially Basel. Um, and with me in studio is uh, Chris Pomwiti, who is an agronomist, and he has been telling us a lot about what it takes to set up um, a hubs farm, especially for, for, uh, for Basel and the challenges that go, uh, farmers are going through and how they can be able to uh, overcome these challenges. Before we went on break, um, Chris Paul, you are, you are trying to explain to us if I have a quarter piece of land yeah. and I'm a new farmer. I don't have any idea of how to grow a basil and I've contracted you as a um, consultant. Mm -hmm. Just take me through from, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, you said it is uh, uh, labor intensive and it is also uh, capital intensive. Capital, capital intensive. Mm. So take us through those two. All right. Uh, yes. By capital, simply we mean that you'll have to have blocks, those greenhouses. You can decide to go with either wooden or metallic. In fact, and forgetting that, you can decide to do woods, wood, uh, wooden blocks. Of course they do. The only challenge is the durability. So there are those two options. You can decide to do the wooden ones or the metallic ones. Mm -hmm. Which one is cheaper and uh, by how much? Of course, of course, the metallic one is expensive, but on the other end it is durable and also presentable. Um, so probably 100,000 you can have your wooden one, a block, but for these other metallic you'll have to do plus 250,000 Kenya shillings for a block. Mm -hmm. So for your quarter acre you'll have to have two. That's around 500,000, right? We, s we now go to the seedlings. Mm -hmm. So we have 500,000 plus now the other things. You saw seedlings. Mm -hmm. Seedlings will cost you probably 20,000 mm -hmm. quality seedlings. Then from there, maybe products around 5,000 Kenya shillings. Uh, uh, when you say products, which products exactly are these? They are biological products that mm -hmm. we use. Uh, they, are, they are biological products from the, some companies, for instance, Copart and other biological companies that's what we use mostly we, we are not allowed to use chemicals okay yeah because of again of the gap regulations and a few other things so products will cost you around five ten thousand mm -hmm. then from there maybe the normal things f scales tables and crates let's give them all fifty thousand 50,000. Yes. Okay. So it'll be close to 600,000, right? Yes. Yeah. So for a quarter an acre, we can comfortably deal with, do with 700,000 mm -hmm. and we'll be fully set. Uh, yes, you've talked of all those, but you've not talked to, uh, to me about I need to have a, uh, um, a cold room. A cold room. W one, if you're having this, probably this more type of a project, mm -hmm. you can think of having a truck which will work as a cold room okay. because we've seen small farmers are not able to do th that cold room and a cold room will cost up to 2m so if you're having an quota probably you won't be able to have that cold room so what happens for small scale two blocks or three blocks you can have the truck you can hire or you can own or also introduce the charcoal cooler of which you've seen work uh, effectively so charcoal coolers work? Yeah, yeah. All we want is to maintain the temperature. That's where we are. Of course, for small kilos. But if you're having a tan, it cannot work well with charcoal coolers. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, for someone having uh, sm small scale farming or having two blocks, it's recommendable to use just the truck. The truck will come and run and will charge you probably 2,000. And you have maybe four or five hours to harvest that crop and pack it. And the truck goes? Yes. Ah, okay. So um, after the uh, crop leaves the farm, mm -hmm. what happens uh, when it gets to the airport? There are procedures. Uh -huh. What there are, are procedures? different bodies that um, will check. KFIS will check. Uh, the famous HCDA will check. Also the agent from the buyer you are selling to will check. Mm -hmm. Yes. What are they checking exactly? Quality, temperature, and uh, they'll check also, they'll check also um, quality. When it comes to quality, we mean if th there is damages, physical damage. 
They also check um, pests or any visible evidence of infestation. They'll shake, they'll use lenses, they'll pick leaves and check, they'll do any sort of in, uh, checking so that they ensure that the quality is perfect. Okay. Yes. What the company, the, 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 the freight agents will also check the temperature. That, that's a requirement. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of uh, the, the Euro gap specification, mm -hmm. uh, do you have a few in mind that you think uh, are really paramount when it comes to hubs farming? Yes, the, the gap uh, specifications is a huge list, but of course we know there are a few that we can add on. For instance, uh, about MRL, this is the residue, mm -hmm. chemical residues on your crop. Also, uh, the quality. Th those are just the major mass I'm trying to mention. Um, the MRLs, the, quanti the, the, the quality control measures. Mm -hmm. This is where we ensure that there is no maybe damages, there is no uh, visible pest. You, we are not supposed to have the crop infested with either wet fire or caterpillars or any bugs. Also, you should be licensed because it's a requirement. You should have the license to export. Mm -hmm. So without the cap, you can't export. Also, the cafes should be there, the document itself, among other things. Are this... Um uh, licensing also come with, uh, is it an additional uh, cost? Yes, for you to be licensed, you need some, you have to pay. Of, co of course, not that expensive. Uh, of course, not that expensive. Yeah, but it depends with uh, which document. For instance, I, I think I think the HCD will cost around 40,000. Mm -hmm. KFIS is 30, 35. I'm not, I'm not sure about the actual rates, but it's around 40, 30. The one that can be a bit uh, challenging is the the global gap itself because it will cost you hundred plus thousand. Okay. In fact, it should be one fifty, one seventy. They are about depending with the agent you are using, and depending with uh, the crops themselves that are exporting. Okay. Yes. So, uh, in conclusion, you can say if I have a quarter of an acre, I need a million shillings to uh, have everything. In Close to that. Now you can just 800 is okay. No, I'm saying on the higher side. On the higher side, yes. yes. One million is okay. One million shilling to, to be comfortable that you'll be yes. able to achieve everything. Yes. Needed. But contrary, hmm. from the same project, you'll be, you'll be also making, you'll be making um, 100, um, two blocks will only give you 200 kilos, right? Every week. On each week. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the price is six dollars or six point five. That's around six hundred bob. So let's uh, let's call it uh, six hundred. So we'll be having now your six hundred times your two hundred. On each week, you'll be having now <laughs> that amount of money. But mostly for export, we encourage people to have more than three blocks. So that you know maximize production. Ah, okay. Yes. So ah. it's it's very few people who start with two. Uh, of which it works. Although no, the, 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 the returns are lesser compared to someone having five blocks. If you add five blocks, then you'd be doing 500 kilos on Saturday. That's close to 250,000 on each week. Every week you have yes. 250,000? Yes. Then I reduce my costs and I remain with something? Yeah. Ah, okay. So in terms of, we've talked about in the international market. Mm. Um, what about the local market? Is there a market for these hubs? Um, like for example, <coughs> last year and part of this year, we're still battling COVID. Mm. And last year, the um, international market had been, uh, had interference. Mm. Even as we speak, there is a less flow of market. Uh, we are not shipping as we used to ship. But here in Kenya, some people consume the same. And uh, only that they, they, they require very, very little, mm -hmm. probably 20 kilos, 50. But also there are, there are, I think, five companies that help farmers sell. They buy from the farmers. Of course, it's, uh, it's uh, a bit uh, lower in terms of price, but it, it helps a lot. We have, I think, 10, five to 10 companies that buy from farmers. 
um, they, 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 they buy from now a farmer and they will ex export. Okay. Some buy and dry. So if there is no that direct export to market, we try also this uh, middleman thing, right? And again, there are also people who buy locally, as in he just needs 10 kilos to display on his supermarket. We also have supermarkets selling the same. They are also, they are also locally used by people who make juices. There are some hotels I know in Parklands that use the same. So the, the only challenge is only they pick, they only buy lesser kilos. Okay. They ask for 15 kilos, 25 kilos. And, and having 20 kilos, then you can imagine how it is. It is to sell only 14 kilos. Okay. <laughs> I've also seen supermarkets selling... Um, bunches. Not really bunches, mm. but the crop that is in a, in a container that is still a growing crop. Mm. You deliver it in a... Uh, instead. Potted. Yes. Yeah, I've seen it once or twice, I think in a few here in town. But they do not offer much because if you are buying it, you of course don't know how to look after it, you don't know how to give it, on, and others also don't, use, don't know how to use it. So again, I would stick, uh, if one is, uh, you encounter such, then do some research and then take them off. Okay. Yeah. Um, what other challenges would farmers go through in terms well, of? producing these herbs? Well, well, there are a lot of challenges. I think I myself as a farmer also, I've encountered a few that I love to mention. Eh? There's frowned. Mm. Uh, this is where someone is uh, promising to pay after 14 days and uh, then he won't pay calls and then he won't pay out of nowhere. Uh, it's a challenge that is affecting us a lot. Not only me, not only uh, people are doing basic, but the entire market of agriculture. Those, mm. That's a local market or international market? Local market. International, there are few. The, the only challenge with the international market is uh, where your quality fails you or an issue with the flight. Mm. Very few cases where you fail to be paid. Now, with the local market, that's the only challenge. People will buy. We agree you are buying my basil at 400. He pays probably half and the rest he won't pay. Or if he decides to vanish with Everything and it's a challenge that I've encountered in Safari from my farm. Uh, I'm still working on it because uh, I've seen people deliver them uh, crops and they fail to pay. And there are no contracts before? There are contracts, but uh, you see now, there's that part of where you trust someone with your crop, right? You've been feeding this guy 200 kilos on each week, and the last one. He decides not to pay. He, decide he, he pays for a few <laughs> and then the last one he decides he's not pay. Yeah. Also, there are people who will... Uh, I think that's the challenge number one. Challenge number two is uh, now maybe when there's a calamity or the COVID thing, that's, that's a challenge. It's a huge one because uh, we've lost a lot. The other challenge would be maybe lack of water, fads, mismanagement. Let's say we were using pipe to water and some, some road works are underway and the pipes are damaged. So we'll be having no water and that, that's a challenge. Also tropical pests. Mm -hmm. There was the famous uh, locust uh, swamps. It uh, played the huge role of, uh, uh, they, they just damaged some of the farms because there's nothing we could have done. The other challenge would be maybe capital. Yes. Um, and do you think government is doing enough to protect the farmers? Yeah, I've seen some efforts. I've seen some efforts, although not fully implemented and uh, not the way it would be. But we've seen some efforts. We've seen some government adjacent funding projects. I know a few that uh, are funded some farmers. Uh, and uh, it's helping, although we wish we could see more of that. Because we need, we just need to see them funding farmers who have potential. Okay. Yeah. When you talk about funding, uh, mm -hmm. is, it, is, that, is it possible to mention some of these in uh, um, government institutions that are funding farmers and funding them to what tune? Uh, I think what really happens is uh, you are submitted to some, some interviews. You have to present what you have. They, ca they have to visit the farm. There are even some international sponsors. 
Yeah, but that's a key point. I, I've seen some few China companies sponsoring some farmers, a friend of mine, um, and uh, it really helped. But uh, on our government, uh, I just know one from Agriculture, Ministry of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. They funded a project. Uh, uh, for now, I can't really remember the name, but... Uh, there are some funding. Yeah, there is some funding. Oh. Although it may take time. Although it may take time, but I know it is very much effective. Okay. Yes. So let's say, for example, my crop gets to the airport. Mm -hmm. and, um, there is a flight challenge. Hmm. Yeah, there are flight challenges. What happens there? What? There are options. Mm -hmm. You can be, the flight can be scheduled. The, you are also given another, an option to search, to, to search for another flight company. Mm -hmm. Remember at the airport there are many, there are different flight companies. We have Morgan, we have Atlanta, Signon, General Cargo, and DHL. So there are variety of companies. So if maybe you have an issue with this one, you can think of another. another. But the challenge is the, the quality, L let's say the, how they deliver their stuff, time taken, and also charges. If you stick to KQ, probably it's the best, but contrary expensive. I think a kilo will do 200 bob plus, and most of the buyers may not prefer that one, because it's much expensive, so you won't be having any profit. But there are also other companies that are fair. We've been using them. DHL is fair, fast, reliable. In fact, most of the farmers nowadays use DHL. Okay. So if you have a flight issue, you just you have to get another company or they reschedule. you. If you wanted them, there are instances where the truck is, is uh, late and the flight is you are, it's done. They won't be waiting there for you. So th it's either you reroute or you get another, you, you reschedule or get another flight company. Is that uh, the farmer's um, work or you, you have an agent who handles all that for the you? They are agents and uh, also they are agents who are farmers. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, you can be an agent and you're a farmer. So you will fix for yourself. But most agents will work for that. Okay. Yes. So they know where how far they keep taking uh, yeah. track of where you how far your truck yeah. is. You are given time limits. It, they will start you looking you for you plan B. Yeah, you are given time limits. They keep checking on you. In fact, you are supposed to deliver if it is possible is a day before. You right? deliver a day before the flight. Yes. Okay. So most of the flights uh, they will do will deliver before midnight, but the flight will leave tomorrow maybe at ten. Yes. Okay. So they are, they are that keen on timing. Okay. Yes. Let's say, for example, my crop gets to Europe or to my destination and it has a problem. Mm. Uh, whose, whose, whose responsibility will that be? Their procedures, their bodies specifically to tackle that problem, the client himself, and they are also agents. So first thing is the airport uh, security mechanisms. They will call you, and there are bodies that will inspect your produce mm. on touchdown they'll give reports. If there's a red flag, there are ways to handle such cases. For instance, if it is way too bad, it must be destroyed and you have to pay. There are fines. So you pay for it to be destroyed. Okay. If it is fair, they'll check the produce that is okay. And the other one, you'll be fined. Right? Mm -hmm. So probably, let's say you've, you are done 500 kilos. A hundred of them are not of good quality. They'll do a sum of the bad ones. There is an option of repaying them for the next shipment or you deducted the amount of money that you're supposed to be sent. So those strategies are again are on different clients. So each client has his own mechanism of handling such an issue. Yeah. Okay. And for the, for the export market, how do they pay? Do they pay? Uh, depending on your client, depending on how well you know each other, it can be seven days, it can be 14 days, it can be cash, it can even be prayer. Also the demand. If there is high demand, they, uh, they try to tempt people with paying 50% just even before. Also the relationship with the buyer and the seller. If you you good, it can also be, it can be paying prayer. Or after two days or after 14 days, of course, bank, bank transfers. Okay, so yes. it, it depends on your relationship with the buyer. Yes. 
and your agreement with the buyer? Yes, mostly they should be seven days. Okay, I've but, seen but the international market really uh, failed to pay? Some failed to pay. Some failed to pay. The reason? <laughs> there is fraud. I mentioned that earlier, although it is very minimal compared to here in Kenya. The local, the local market? Yes. Okay. But uh, again, we, we may set the shipment and then on the process of the transportation, it uh, develops a problem. So again, you won't be paid. So you delivered your crops when they are of good quality to the airport and then, then the flight may be too long or there were issues with their cooling system or there are someone who tampered with the crop or the crops were located band handling or the client was late to pick them at the airport they would just go bad to suffer the loss so um on those instances you've <laughs> mentioned mm. uh when i deliver my crop at the airport mm. uh, isn't there a point whereby uh, i've met the time the deadlines i've delivered my crop at the right uh, temperature uh, is it still my problem after that? Yeah, probably because you are the one selecting the flight. So does the f uh, does it, the flight cannot <laughs> compensate me for, the, for the failure on their part? There are processes, and uh, that's where we, I think we are failing as farmers. We are not taking insurances. So if your produce was insured, then you might be lucky. But there's those processes that will make sure that you are done but it really it really happens mm -hmm. it's not things that will happen each day it's very rare if at all you are packed your crop well in fact basil will stay fresh for over seven days right if you pack it well yes if you are perfect at the farm seven to ten days yes so very rare that we have flight um, issues here and there on the flight yes a few mishandling but it's not always once in a while okay with but with this expensive rice you're always good to go yes so that's where you also consider which flight you choose which flight company you choose yes okay. so in terms of uh, production where are we as a country yeah we are far much behind <laughs> compared with egypt compared with uh, israel we are far much behind uh, we need to work with hubs because probably uh, in Kenya population of people who are aware of the crops themselves is very low. You go somewhere and you mentioned Basi is like, what is that? So according to me, we are far behind because we do not know or we are, even the education system does not cover any of the hubs. We are not familiar with how helpful they are. We have very, very, very shallow information on apps, mm -hmm. from my point. Okay. Yes, because I don't think there are much trainings, people are not aware. It, probably here, if you count 10 people who knew Basil, probably it's me and you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> true, that is, that is very true. Yeah, because we are not used to, and I think that's where we are feeling. Okay. Yeah. So what do you think we need to do as a country to, to get ourselves to mm. be very competitive? Create awareness. This is where we, the government should at least educate people mm -hmm. on benefit of apps production, not only on uh, on uh, economic basis, on also on the health benefit. Because the reason why these people are buying them expensively is because of the value of the health benefit. In fact, that's the the reason why they're expensive is because they know their purpose. Okay. And if you also knew the importance of those crops, you would be growing them massively. So if the government would create awareness and uh, introduce trainings, fund people, help, maybe uh, have institutions that specifically target uh, apps production, then we'd be on a better place. Okay. Yes, also, you see now, the gov we, we do not also have products for apps. We just know products for tomatoes and Okay. We are not that. Um, uh, yeah, we are not that well informed as a country. That is from again my point of view because we cannot compare ourselves with Egypt, uh, the the Akina, Israel, and the rest. Israel in terms of agriculture, and that's why we don't even have companies 
processing the same produce here. If we had then, it would have created a market for our country, other than now shipping them to the UK for them to process and do well extractions. Okay. Yeah, so we are lacking some those few things, and if you add them, then you'd be on the safe side, probably. Okay. <laughs> when you talk about lack of awareness, uh, I'm tempted to ask you, how did you start yourself? Because um, <laughs> you, are, you are not that old, you're still a young man. So yeah. how did you, where did you learn about hubs? And how did you start and how has the journey been until this particular time? Well, I also, I also was not into hubs or into agriculture. There's uh, one lady who introduced me to it. I still call her my mom. She has faith. I call Muranga, Keno, I think, and she's the one who introduced me to the business. And uh, by that time, I didn't have, I didn't, I didn't think that it is it will work. I was just employed, and that's where now I started as a, just a normal worker. Then my boss Lydia, uh, Lydia introduced me now, mentioned that I should do some training. That's when I thought of doing now the diploma and now advancing in production. Mm -hmm. So I later on, I later on specified on hubs only. In fact, I now work with hubs only. This is my sixth year, okay. professionally. And um, it has been challenging because I have my project also. So I can tell how it feels to grow them and who cost a soko. <laughs> I can tell, but uh, I've been learning because it has not been easy. I've been going trainings. I've been meeting people, big people, companies. And I think what really matters is the passion, the drive, oh, okay. the focus. So, so it's, it was the drive because the same, same company I was employed is the same that I'm leasing. Okay. So it's like, uh, I thought that I should own this thing. That's when I focused more, worked, did some research, and there's that sacrifice where you have to spray that basil even on Sunday. This is where you have to work on 25. This is where you have to be on the farm full time. You forget about your family, you forget about everything, you just focus on your crop production. Then I think that's what helped me a lot. I used oh, to okay. sacrifice a lot. Okay. Yeah. So as a young man, what had I, in less than one minute, I'm told you are running out of time. Okay. Less than one minute. What advice will you give to young people who say um, there are no opportunities out there? Yeah, there is a lot of opportunities for us uh, youth because I know if there is something that is missing in this field is youth. People who have the drive, people who have the energy to go out there, help other farmers, people who, are, who want to invest. It's 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 more of youth thing than the elderly. Mm -hmm. This is because I've seen it work. I have a lot of friends who are below 25, 20, and 30, and they are doing it very well. So if someone is out there and uh, he really has it in his heart, let them do it. Okay. Let's even encourage our children to do it. Yes, that's I think that's the best thing. Let us not all do the IT and the the mass thing general. You know, this, the, the, the mass the mass comb and the IT, you can try to channel other people to agriculture in the three days, probably because I've seen it work. Okay. Yes. What about the high cost of, uh, the, high, the, the high capital cost? Well, what I can do is say is there are banks that rent through, you don't have to start with the greenhouses, you can do outdoors, do rosemary, which is cheaper. With your 200,000, you have crops and you get returns and then advance. Yes, there are companies that lend money. Mm -hmm. There are bank uh, loans, the individual loans. There's where you start small. There's where you become a group and start. You partner with your cousin, start a project. Each contributes 100,000. You have your 20,000, you grow rosemary. And you're done. the moment you start shipping that, you're done. Oh, because okay. probably you have returns. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Crispo. Uh, that has been a very in, uh, insightful um, conversation. Mm -hmm. Thank uh, you. We too. are very grateful for you also sparing some time to be with us. And I'm sure our viewers have also learned a little bit about what it takes to be 
to, to grow hubs and that there are opportunities out there, it's up to them to, to grab them. Uh, for those who joined us late, we are talking about hub farming, and today we were majorly focusing on um, Basil. Until next time, goodbye.